There's great power in prayer, even more in group prayer. This is the foundation of the Unity Movement and our church. Our prayer ministry has close to over 100 active participants supporting our community and the world. There's great synergy in us coming together consistently. Beyond our own personal experience with prayer, there's so much evidence to its impact on the collective consciousness. The Maharishi effect shows that if 1% of the population meditates, it produces measurable improvements in the quality of life for the whole population. The world is going through a lot of change. We must go to the unchanging realm of the divine and help co-create the best outcome for the most impactful event taking place. Let's join together to support this cause. Thank you for joining us. Your presence, your consciousness is summoned for humanity at this time. There's great power in prayer, even more in group prayer. This is the foundation of the Unity Movement and our church. Our prayer ministry has close to over 100 active participants supporting our community and the world. There's great synergy in us coming together consistently. Beyond our own personal experience with prayer, there's so much evidence to its impact on the collective consciousness. The Maharishi effect shows 
that if 1% of the population meditates, it produces measurable improvements in the quality of life for the whole population. The world is going through a lot of change. We must go to the unchanging realm of the divine and help co-create the best outcome. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare ye the way of the Good morning, everyone. We are getting prepared here. We've got uh, our, our Holy Week with Easter on the way next Sunday, and we're so glad you're joining us today. Welcome to Unity of the Triangle. My name is Jay. I'm up here with Tim and John and Robert uh, bringing you the music here, and uh, thank you so much. We want to bid a special hello there to those of you tuning in online through YouTube, Facebook, uh, through the website. Thanks for uh, checking out Unity of the Triangle. Always uh, a lot of special things going on here and such a wonderful community. We're always inviting new people to be a part of it. If So if you're new here today, be sure to say hello. You can fill out a guest card on the table out front there if you want to keep in touch with uh, everything that's going on here. And uh, I know we've had some special guests today. You'll be hearing about that. Um, but uh, I do want to point out that, of course, next Sunday, a big celebration for Easter. And um, the capstone of that is going to be our wonderful Easter bonnet parade led by Miss Fantastic Friend Gotcher. Um, so uh, bring, your, bring out your best bonnet or Easter hat. We're going to do a little uh, parade during the service. It's going to be a lot of fun. And not only that, our youth are going to be very busy with a lot of activities culminating in our big extravaganza, checking out uh, or looking for all the Easter eggs. So, um, and of course, we have a potluck going on after the service, so you don't want to miss out next Sunday, Easter Sunday, right here at Unity. Okay. Um, I don't see any kids here. I wonder where they might have gone. Hmm. Well, maybe we can, uh, we can summon them here. So we invite you to sing with us. We've got a, a song appropriate for Palm Sunday, and maybe they'll be making an appearance here. Oh, 
Hosanna loud, Hosanna, the little children sang. Through pillar at court and temple, the lovely anthem rang. To Jesus, who blessed them, held close against his chest. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. Hosanna in the highest, that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven and King. Oh, may we ever praise Him with heart and mind and voice, and in His blissful presence eternally rejoice. Hosanna, 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 the little children sang through pillar at court and temple. The lovely anthem rang to Jesus, who had blessed them, held close against his chest. The children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Please stand and join us in blessing the children. Together, you are loved, special, and important just the way you are. And now remain standing and join us in the welcome song as we dismiss the youth. You desire to abide in the praises of your people So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts As we offer up this praise unto your name Welcome into this place Welcome into this open vessel praises of your people so we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name
Good morning. Let me ask you this. Can you recall when you were a carefree, happy little girl or little boy? Let us pray. In the stillness, we hear the invitation to return within to that place where the heart of a child still resides, that place where we feel joy for no reason at all where we sing songs without words as if no one is listening. That place where we dance without music. It's this space where we are in alignment with the light of God. The ups and downs of our life's journey and the circumstances we face, we deny them the power to keep us from this inner joy. We affirm the light of God flows through all of us, including those named in this prayer box. And so we bravely navigate our life's journey, filled with God's light, holding hands with our inner child. Our hearts sing even when there are no words. Our hearts dance even when there's no music. We are the light of the world. And so it is. Amen. Let's begin to move into meditation. First, adjust your body so you can sit comfortably, and then let's relax. Letting the face relax, and the hands. Let the shoulders drop, Let the legs relax.
So as the body relaxes and you move into a quieter sense of the body, let us also pay attention to the breath so that the mind might quiet. So we pay attention to the breath, feeling it as it comes in and goes out. Keeping the mind just focused on the breath, not straining, but focused on the breath. Now let us add a sense of spaciousness Perhaps you can see your body inside of you rather than you inside your body. And in the center of you, there is a heart, an energetic center of love and acceptance. Let us focus the breath there. Feeling the heart expand with each breath. The energy of love and acceptance becoming stronger and stronger and as it does, send it out to the rest of your being. That your whole being might be a center of love and acceptance. So now begin to image, sense, and feel the possibility, the truth, the sensation that you are one with the source. That the love you send is the love you share with the one. That the wisdom and the intelligence you share is also with the one. That awakening in you is your Christ nature, your nature that is unseparated, always connected, always at one with the source. That this is who you really are. Though we have practiced being small. Let us pull our attention toward that one presence, but continuing to breathe into our hearts and sending love out into this space, connecting with others as they do it, but also reconnecting with yourself. As we send love out, as we are love made manifest. Let us do that as we sit together in holy silence.
Give us this day our daily bread. You said you would supply all my needs according to your riches. I have but to ask and I shall receive. Go from here and share this love you gave to me To show someone who's lost And help them find their way The way to truth and faith So they can be free like me Free like me your love, Lord, we are your peace, Lord, we are your joy this day. Always great having these guys, isn't it? Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we also have another guest in the house. You've known her before. She's backed by popular demand. Anna Quintana is here. So, and before I get started, I just want to remind you that we have a good variety service starting at seven o'clock. It's a relatively shorter, maybe 45 minutes, and um, it's, a, it's a great way to begin this um, deepening that we'll be celebrating uh, during Easter, but this will be the Friday night where it's dramatic, and you'll, you'll, you should come, it'll be fun. Today is Palm Sunday, and Palm Sunday, like many of those great holidays in the Christian calendar, always give me a hard time. I always have a hard time going, like, how am I going to deal with this? Part of the reason I say that is, is because of the complexity of, the, of, of Unity's interpretation of traditional Christian symbols. Now, I was listening to a Catholic priest as I was getting ready for this, and he was he was very well grounded in the Catholic faith. And in the Catholic faith, Jesus is indeed the only being of his type ever to exist. And as such, he occupies a unique place in history and a unique place in their religion. And in that religion, all you really need to do is to come to Jesus and then life is work, gonna work out for you. Essentially, that's the message in that Jesus is indeed the only Son of God. And it has been my thought since I was at least 16 years old that that was a slight miss and un un <laughs> they were wrong, uh, essentially. <laughs> and that is that Jesus was not the only Son of God, but was the best example that we could find of what it is to be fully realized into the potential of your human divine connection, that you, like Jesus, are sons or daughters of God, and that you have potential to realize that, and the realization of that might resemble what Jesus did, but will have its own path. And so when we come to those historically recorded events of Jesus like like coming to Jerusalem and riding on a colt into the city or being crucified and being uh, resurrected those we will use for symbols 
and we will not leave them just for something historical or something that was 2,000 years ago or for one person, but instead they become symbols for all of us. How the transformational process goes, that transformational process from seeing yourself as a body, as just a human being, to recognizing that the power and the presence of the Spirit lives as you. Not so much in you, but as you. It is you. And I'm not just talking about your body, because so often in our culture and so often as we grow up, we begin to identify with the body as being who we are. We feel that we are contained within the skin, that the skin is the perimeter of our existence, and that we are separate from the world and separate from everything else, and we are a separate, threatened, frightened often, mortal thing. And then our lives are relatively short, and that we're at risk. And there's lack in the world, and there's not enough to go around, so we must fight for our fair share, and then some. And that story of us being just that little thing, with all the weaknesses and all the limitations that come with that little thing, that has been the easy one for us to hear and to accept because it resembles our experience so far. But what the story of Jesus, when we take it symbolically, is saying, yeah, well, that you might have had that as your experience. You may be in the midst of illness or poverty or grief or loss, but there is more to you than that. And though we take those symbols, the symbols that come through the Christian tradition, and we apply them to our lives so that we might have hope that though it feels like this, there is more to it. We are not limited by the feeling or the visuals or the history but we are here to be reborn as Christed beings. In other words, as people who know their connection as a part of the one presence everywhere. That's what Easter means in this context. Not that Jesus was the only one to ever do that, but he is the one who shows the way. And so in unity, they often call Jesus the way shower or the great example, and rather de-emphasize his exception. Now, <clears throat> I think if he walked in the room, I might actually really pay attention to the exception because it's not likely that I'm gonna meet anybody like him, nor will many other people. And it's very not likely that I will be exactly like him or even close to where he is, all of that. But I do believe that the message is not to say, because you won't be as good as LeBron James, you shouldn't play basketball. <laughs> because you can't walk on water, you shouldn't realize that you can rise above your emotions because you can't break bread and feed 5,000 with just a minor bit of starter material, doesn't mean that I can't produce abundance in my heart and in my life. It is saying that when you master things like that, wild things can happen. But along the way, you too are a creator. You too can be born again. You can come out of whatever you're in and find victory. You too can know yourself as part of that one presence and quietly to yourself, if never it out loud, say, yep, that's me. You could do that. And while Jesus is a great exception to most of us, he is more important, I think, as the great example. 
Ah, so. So that's how you do it. And so let's explore this little story about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. He comes into Jerusalem, as you know well enough, I think. He tells his disciples, go get this donkey. And it's tied up over there somewhere. He can't out of sight, but go, go that way, you'll find him. And then if anybody asks you, just tell them that the master needs it. And they do that. So I'm sure you're familiar with people and their sense of ownership. And so, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, sure, just take it. I guess that's right. But when you speak the word from the place of source, when you're speaking from that place, as you say a thing, so it is so. It's also true in your own psyche. When you say something and you hear yourself, you begin to create a vibration that draws to you the very events that you're talking about. And so how a man speaketh, that's the sh what is his destiny or her destiny. As a man speaks, as a person speaks, as a woman speaks, so you begin the creation of the event. And that's why your speech is important. Because it's not just speech, it's the beginning of creation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. In other words, it is the source. And that is the rough translation of the first words in the Gospel of John. And the word they're talking about is the logos. And the logos doesn't just mean word like our English language word. The logos is the creative process. If you look up the logos in the dictionary, it's two pages. It's a lot, and we have reduced it down to the word. But it means the creative process. But it is kind of the word anyway. It's not completely a wrong thing to say. In the beginning is the beginning vibration. And the beginning of that vibration then begins to go out and begins to ripple through creation. And it brings to it, or it is reflected back, to where it came from. And so as you say a thing, so it becomes. The stronger you become in tune with your divine nature, the more the voice has power. But all your voices, even the ones that are just talking, So we'll see. I mean, you know, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> so go get the donkey, and they bring back the donkey. He gets on it, and he rides into Jerusalem, which could be considered he rides into the city of peace, but also into the center of consciousness of the area. He goes from the periphery to the interior. Now that periphery is the Christ consciousness going from the periphery of intellectual understanding to the interior of your being, to when you really get that that is who you are. And that is nurtured by anything you might read or hear, by any of that, but it is grown mostly in the, in, in the intuition in the heart, in the sense of um, receptivity. Contemplation of the idea is powerful. Quieting the mind as you contemplate that, then it seems like the links connect. And you go, oh, I'm beginning to get this. And so he travels into Jerusalem on this donkey, which is a symbol of humility. And if you were wondering about this connection of humility to your awakening, it is quite almost paradoxical, isn't it? 
that the very awakening that you're after, which is really sometimes almost considered blasphemous to speak out loud that, yes, I am a child of God. Often people say, you have no right saying that. Ooh, aren't you being arrogant? It is really the opposite that gets you there. It's the humility that allows you to walk or ride that donkey into your deeper consciousness. It is humility. You come with arrogance and you will probably be spanked. Would that be the word? It won't happen if you're too proud. It is when we are broken often that it breaks through. It's when your heart really broken so that you know how important love is. It's when you have nothing that you can turn, that you often turn to the source, to the deeper aspects of your being. When the outer is failing, that's often when we turn inward, isn't it? And so this humility is so beautifully important. And praise and blame, there in that other realm, that other <clears throat> orbit, plays and blame are on this orbit, but when you get down to humility, you've skipped those. You're neither praise nor blame. You're just moving toward the center. And you can get there riding on a, on a donkey faster than you can get there riding on a horse. So he comes into Jerusalem and the Pharisees, ooh, they're the bad guys in the story always. So the Pharisees say, all these people that are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the like, oh, you're so important and everything. Tell them to shut up. And Jesus says, look, if they were silent, the stones would cry out. Now, think of that. When other people begin to recognize you as that presence, they may or may not say anything, but nature itself will begin to respond. It's very seldom that when that happens, when you begin to deepen sufficiently and the emphasis might be on sufficiently, into your spiritual nature that you don't see the fruits of that deepening. It generally happens. It shows up somehow. Something alerts others to who you really are. You begin to be weirdly visible. And you've seen that in some people, haven't you? You go... I remember hearing this story of a Tibetan Lama and he comes, he's, he's getting off the plane and you know how it is at the gate when you get off the plane, there's a bunch of people milling around and they see, people see this guy and they just start to back up and let him in because there's a presence about him. And when you have gotten to that point, the stones, even the people in the airport, will say, oh, look, something special. Now, I was listening to Michael Beckwith. Michael Beckwith has this large church in Los Angeles called Agape, and he was in the secret and has been on Oprah. And he was talking about his second visit on Oprah. And Oprah comes to him in the green room and says, look, I'm going to ask you why bad things happen to good people and you have to answer it in a sound bite. <laughs> so he says, I have a few minutes, so he's meditating. And then it comes to him. And this is what he says. He said, there are four windows for manifestation. Four windows why things like that can happen. The first one is, what everybody's afraid of, is that it's coming from their own consciousness that they're making it happen. 
And it really does happen. It's like what I was talking about earlier. Be careful what you say. Be careful what vibration you begin to put out. Because as you put that out, so it will come back to you. That's one window in which the bad things can happen to good people. The second window <clears throat> is this. That you raise your sights. You raise your intention. You raise your dream up. And you are not ready for it in the sense of you need some refinement to get there. It, you need to be able to match that. And so a circumstance is given to you to train you, to refine you, so that you can step into that higher vision. So that because you're not ready yet, it will train you. It will be a gift. And it, like so many of us know, the worst thing that's ever happened to you turns out to be the best thing. That you were not really um, as good as you are today because you hadn't gone through the fire you went through. But you have now gone through it and you see what was a curse as a blessing. So that's the second window, is that it comes as a problem, but it turns out to be a blessing. And then the third one <clears throat> is that it comes as a blessing, but you don't see it. And this way, he was told this story. Uh, there was a woman who was quite successful, um, but her heart was closed. And she gets pregnant and has a child, and the child has severe um, difficulties, development difficulties. And, but she loves this child. And then at age 11, the child slips and falls into the swimming pool and drowns. And she goes to a psychic who is in touch with the other side across the veil. And the psychic says, you know, that child of yours that was so disabled in this life was an avatar. And he came expressly to open your heart. And so sometimes what doesn't look like a blessing is a blessing, not in that way. And then the fourth way I've forgotten. <laughs> but you catch a drift, right? <laughs> I actually think, when I think about Jesus coming into Jerusalem, one of the things I've often said to myself was, what was he thinking? Everybody knows you don't go to Jerusalem during Passover when the Romans are occupying the city because they're afraid of riots, because they have been occupying the city for years, you don't go to Jerusalem, not even riding on a donkey, you don't want to show up as a threat to the Roman government because they don't take threats lightly. And they're not afraid to kill people. So his death would be almost inevitable. But the fourth way this might happen is that you turn the hand of history with your own actions. And I think that's what this story of Jesus going to Jerusalem and dying and being resurrected is about, is that this is the process of life changing. Have you noticed that so much of this incarnation we are experiencing requires a sense of sacrifice sometimes to get something greater to happen. Perhaps you sacrifice time or talent or treasure. Perhaps you sacrifice your, your life as it is for your child's life. Perhaps you sacrifice your comfort to see that somebody else does better. 
And perhaps it's also in the example of being the great example. When you think all has turned to darkness and death, you are only few days away from resurrection. And that the destruction of the present to make a greater future almost always feels like a loss, but it is so necessary in the transformation to a higher state. You must break it to make it better. And that is uncomfortable. And that is ugly often, but, the big, but it's just the beginning steps of the dance toward resurrection. Where that was lost was replaced tenfold, or as they say in the Bible, you bury the grain and the ear of corn appears, right? First a little, then a lot. This is the path of your life. We want it to be like marshmallow soft the whole way. <laughs> but it turns out it ain't that way. It's often difficult. It's often painful. We're often stretched, even crushed in the process. But like grapes to wine, it's part of the process. We go through it easier when we have faith that, that all things are working together for our good. We have faith when we choose to see life not so much as a problem but as an exploration. When we choose to recognize that the part of us that we have so often ignored is, the, is what will live on forever. That this life of being a body is temporary, but this life of being a soul has a through line to the whole and the complete and the perfect. So let us build our faith by taking this example of Jesus in the story of Easter, not only as a hero doing it, but as our heroic journey, our movement into the next phase of our awakening, that we no longer occupy just the body, but we are consciousness itself. Let's take that journey. Let's awaken. And let's let our life be a life that so blooms by being willing, inviting the transformation no matter what it takes. May this be a fantastic experience, a journey of your life that you love because you see, oh my God, I have come this far. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> I woke up, so Friday morning at 5.30, I woke up. I'm bragging now. I woke up at 5.30, I got up and I walked outside and the moon was almost full and was almost setting. I could just see it. I sat down on the deck rub my dog's back, and I was giddy. It was my 71st birthday at the hour I was born 71 years ago. I rarely have this sense of, wow, look where your life has come in that 71 years. But I had it at that moment. I went, look at the journey I've been on, and it's not a straight line, I can tell you. <laughs> And all the Easter's, no, all the Good Fridays I've been through, and some of the Easter's just popped into memory, and I went, wow, what a trip. I wish the same for you. So let us pray.
Let's always start with the awareness. Begin to be aware that you're feeling a body and you have emotion of something in there. And that the body also has texture and weight. And the breath is in and out. The heart, you may even feel that beating. Ah, so here we are. And this body belongs on this earth. You are not a stranger, but you are the fruit of the earth. Ah, so. And your spirit is also like your body. It belongs in this universe. It is part of this universe. It is part of God. And it is unfolding and unfolding again and unfolding again. And so there you are, on the path, willing and eager to know yourself as you really are. And so it is. Amen. this here thing a long time cutting through the jungle called life Ooh, I hear the calling I follow the sound I got to keep on moving no, it's never gonna knock me down I had a vision A simple sight There I was And I was flipping my wrongs to right No, never give up No, 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 never give in Never give up this love Never give up this love Ooh, never give up Never give in, never give up this love, never give, never give up this love. I've been doing this here thing long time. My dreams with skills that I refine Ooh, I hear the calling I follow the sound Got to keep on moving No, no, it's never gonna knock me down I had a vision A simple sight There I was and I was living my wrongs to right. Never give up, never give in. Never give up this love, never give up this love. No, 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 no. Never give up, never give in. Never give up this love, never give up this. No, 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 no. Never, never give up. Never, never give. 
never give up this love. No, never give up this love. No, 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 never give, never give, never give, never give, never give up, never give in. Never give up this love. Never give up this love. Last year, my dad passed away, and some hours prior to his passing, I was meditating and praying. What came to me was a concentric circle of all the people who loved him, and soon after he passed. Nusam, I just want you to be aware that while you were having your happy moment there, you were not alone. All the souls you have touched were there with you. And that's probably what you felt. So we celebrate that moment and we celebrate your life. And we're going to do that right after service. Surprise! <laughs> and then Maestro, bring it on. Let's do a happy birthday here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear new son. Happy birthday to you. And many, 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 many more. The unity blessing. New song together. New song. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. And so it is. May you know that the party continues after Newsom's celebration, and the party is with me. I'm doing a workshop called Revealing Our Christ. It's a prayer, prayer uh, workshop. I'm going to combine the unity core principle with some of the Jesus wisdom and see how that can be reflected in a seven step prayer practice that will ultimately lead you to that expression of your Christ presence. I had offered rice and beans, so you're gonna get rice and beans, but I made extra so the party can, you can also, without coming to the workshop, enjoy some rice and beans. And, uh, and I do hope that you can come. So right after that fellowship time, we'll start in the fellowship hall. If you have not, I've had quite some people who have signed up, but if you haven't, come to the lobby and um, I'm gonna have Ina in the back helping you register. So hope you can make it and make it like a whole afternoon of fellowship and connection. And then next week, of course, is Easter. And as you know, this church is known for its amazing potlucks. There are great cooks here. And that's what is first thing we want to ask you to see if you next week bring your dish to share. So it's really a, a very de delicious time all together. And then also we need volunteers to help with the event. So we essentially need four people to receive the food, four people to set up, and four people to pick up. And um, I understand that you need to contact Holly Monar, who's here, Is she, are you here? Oh. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she'll be out there um, just signing people for uh, volunteers for that day. Um, Mimi says, remember, volunteers are a great way to get to know people and connect with people you might know or not know. Last but not least, sacred prayer circle training. As you know, prayer is the heartbeat of this church and the unity movement. I believe me, I've been around and I really feel very proud of the prayer ministry in this church and, and the leader, Mimi Low Miller. And there's a particular group of people who are the people who pray over the prayer request in the prayer box. And um, 
we train you. We, you st how do you like that? We, yeah, can't help it. Actually, I, I moved back to Raleigh. Um, I'm still doing. <laughs> yeah, I realize that I'm Puerto Rican, and North Carolinian. That's just the way it is. So even though I am running my own ministry, but you'll see more of me. So um, that's good. But uh, yeah, you will always be my family. You know that. Anyways, the Sacred Prayer Circle training will be held on uh, April 6th from 9.30 to noon, and essentially we'll just give you some tips on how to do prayer over this prayer request. You don't need to be a member in order to be part of this group, and uh, when I was here as an associate, I was part of that group. You get to meet once a month with Reverend Newsom and Mimi and, and the group to pray once again. And I think it's a beautiful ministry, and I always tell my people in the ministry that what else could matter more than to have a space in your life in which you can pray for others. There's, it's an amazing transforma transformative journey when we get to actually do that. So I hope you would take that into consideration and show up on April 6. And now we're shifting gears to uh, allow the expression of our uh, love and generosity. I heard once this expression that says that giving is living. And we get to give and live in a powerful way when we extend everything that we've been receiving onto an organization like this one that really it's making a difference by the vibration of love and faith that we're putting out there. So. Um, remember, you can, those online, can give online, of course, and those of you who have your credit card, you can go out to the lobby and square, use square to give, and of course, you can give here. The amazing best ways to become a recurring giver, that way you just not, don't have to worry about that, so that's always an option. So at this time, I'm going to ask for the greeters to please stand. And thank you so much for being the receivers of all this bounty and abundance. And at this time, then, we're going to do the offertory blessing. But before we do that, we'd love for you to really connect to, to the giving nature of your heart and the Christ presence. When we are in that mode, we're really letting our light be. So do that first. And just make sure that as you say these words, you feel the love being in expression as a blessing. And as you do that, you will see multiple blessings in your life. So together, divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is.
wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let, we let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. One, two, three. something out of today's service we intend to bring you things that will help you in your life become more of who you want to be give you the freedom of forgiveness and the hope of expectancy that your life will unfold in a way that brings you joy happiness and is a contribution to the world if you would like to contribute to this ministry please go to unitytriangle.org hit the donate button and it will lead you into an easy way of doing that. We thank you for your attention and look forward to seeing you again here.